And in this section, we're going to take a look at EIGRP and all of its uh, fun features. Now, EIGRP, for the most part, is going to be a uh, little more in depth than uh, RIP was. Obviously, RIP wasn't that complicated to get operational. It only took me three videos and about 90 minutes to go through everything. Um, so, in EIGRP, it's a little more complicated than that. We have a lot more to do with. So, I'm actually going to hop around a little bit, and I'm going to pretty much go through the implementation and with the way we're going to set this up and work through it is actually going to be regards to how you would get it operational so the initialization so we're going to look at all through all these and then we're going to jump down to authentication and then once we get through authentication then we're going to start diving into the specifics as to how you would do stuff so for instance we'll do uh, some pass selection we'll do summarization and then we'll take a look at uh, optimization and then filtering and then some of the miscellaneous features that are there I can't do everything because 15.2 doesn't support every feature, but every um, if it's in here, I'll cover it, and then I'll flip over to the, the command reference to show you guys how that actually works out. So it's actually very, very straightforward for the most part in how that would actually get put together, but understanding where it is and what it does is going to be the main thing. So as we're going through here, like I said, if you don't understand what next top processing is, you need to know what command is going to do that. So for instance, uh, no next top self if you're using EIGRP over DMVPN. That's usually the only pl place I've ever seen it. And then we have also EIGRP add path would be used in conjunction with next top processing. And the reason why you would use add path is to add at least one or two more routes to, well, I shouldn't say at least. You could potentially add uh, more routes, more best, uh, best routes, or uh, uh, add more paths to where the destination routes. So yeah, you have that option. We'll take a look at how all this stuff works. And like I said, it's important for you to know um, what all these commands do and where, how you would configure them. And no next top self, no ECMP mode, uh, equal cost multipath. Um, so we'll take a look at that as well. The idea now is going to be to get it operational. And where we're going to be doing that is uh, here. The regional Office 1 and, and Regional Office 3. So we're going to be working down down in these two spots right here to get everything operational. And we'll just go through, we'll get everything kicking. So what I'm going to do over um, over here, uh, I'll do uh, I'll do named mode here. We'll do classic here and then named mode here. So what we're going to be doing is just a very, very small classic mode implementation because you want to be comfortable with it and if you've been studying CCNA and CCMP up to this point you should be very familiar with how this works. We're going to be taking a look at named mode because of the fact of it gives you the capability of doing both EI, uh, IPv4 and IPv6 implementations and all of the specifics you need to be running with. So we have that and then we're going to be taking a look at all the details for that. Now one of the things that I would recommend doing and I'm going to take you to the website right now if you were to click on um, Let's see here. Reference guides. And you were to click on iOS and NXOS. Now, if you can go over here and you tell it what you want it to pull up, this is how it, now it works. So, click on what you want to look up. The what what it is you want to see. iOS, iOS 15T, and we're going to be working with 15.3 and 15.3. It doesn't matter which one you really use. But these are going to be the command reference. Uh, you know what? We have to go to a newer release because this version has been um, pretty much we're going to go to reference guides we're going to go to iOS I think I have to go to 15.4 iOS 15 and do 15.4 15.4.3 and then we'll come down here and then you have all of your uh, it should be taking us to command references yes it should be taking us to command references I don't want to go to um, we'll go to configure iOS and then NXOS. I would highly recommend you downloading the um, PDFs, both the configuration guides and the. I see it's taking his configuration guides. I don't know why it's doing that. I want to see the command reference. So let's actually let's do a quick Google search of that. Let's say command reference command command reference 
uh, EIGRP. Okay, so we're going to click on this and we're going to see where it takes us. So this is for, does it tell us what version? It doesn't say. But I can tell you, let's see, if you scroll down here, it'll tell you what versions it's releasing up to, and we are I'm trying to think here what the best way to EIGRP 15.4. 15.4 command references. So this is what you're looking for. Technically speaking, the yeah, Cisco exam. Uh, let's see here. So Cisco support. It says this guy products so okay let's let's follow that path so it says uh, up here at the, in the URL bar it says that you want to do support so we're gonna click on support we're gonna go down to where does it say it support and we're gonna click on iOS and NXOS software so here the um, level you want to look at. So we're going to be looking at let's see here. Does it tell us? 15.3. See that's a little older. We want to be looking at I was 15.4M. Now see that's not even listed here. There's a question. What's the difference between M&T and the S train? The S train is going to be the service provider track. So if you are interested in doing SP there's actually a couple of commands that are available in SP that are not available in regular mainline and train, but um, let's see here. We'll click on 15.3M, uh, and then we're going to say reference guides, and then command references, and then we'll come down to uh, EIGRP. All right, so that's a little bit better. So it's a little bit bigger than. Well, actually, we're going to stick on, we'll stick to this guy because of what it's, the uh, it's a higher higher level. So, you notice, this one was, click on this one, this one is 3.7, this one's 3.7 as well. Okay, so, if you were to uh, click on A through H, you get add paths, where if you were to go to an earlier version, you could tell based on, level of complexity that there's a couple of options in here we're gonna go through every command and I would recommend doing that and then the thing is you can go I through R not as much in here there's still quite a bit of uh, quite a few options here and then S through B we're gonna be looking at a lot of show commands and the reason why we're gonna be looking at a lot of show commands is because the fact that um, you should be able to when you're going through your uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you're going through your preparation, you want to make sure you know what, you know, if you're if they're telling you something, uh, you want to make sure you know every show command. So we're going to be looking at that as well. So first and foremost, let me get this set up the way I did it last night. Okay, so we're going to be looking at this from, we're going to go a little smaller than this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at, so we're going to jump into getting everything configured and ready to go. Uh, there's a question, how come this is flapping up and down with the uh, the tracking for what we did in RIP? Well, the reason it's flapping, uh, I really don't know. Um, the, obviously the route is up. If we were to do a uh, uh, jump out here and do a show IP interface brief. The route is obviously up right here, but for whatever reason, it's just, I think it's the GNS3 thing. Uh, I've, it does that every time I've done it. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, name mode configured here and start working our way through. We're going to look at multicast versus unicast addressing, things like that, get these operational, and go from there. So we're going to start on router 16. We're going to go to global config. We'll type in router EIGRP, and we'll type in uh, RO. Uh, can we do anything specific? Yeah, we have to type in word. So, uh, RO, well, let's do this. We'll do... Uh, three, or this is one. 
we'll say one, and this will be uh, particular to the regional office that we're doing it at. So we'll do regional office two, uh, one here, and I think three is over here, and we'll hit enter. And then we have to specify the address family. Now, one of the things that I want to take a quick uh, pit, uh, pit stop, or not pit stop, but, uh, you know, want to take a <laughs> uh, side trip, I guess. I don't know, but you uh, sightseeing, whatever, whenever you go off your beaten path. Um, so, the uh, service family. Service family, and then IPv4, and autonomous system 1. If you come in here, this right here is going to be the service family is designed for media type of in, in implementations. So, if you deal with the SAF service ad, advertisement framework, which is what the service family is for, and basically what this does is you're able to advertise things like CCD and um, which is Cisco Call Discovery, and I think what's the other one? I'm trying to think, it's it's all based on voice and video. This is where that comes into play. I want to throw a quick uh, note out there. We, you don't need to know that for the lab. Address family IPv4, autonomous system 1. And then we're going to run with that. And then if we were to do question mark, we have a couple of options here. So we have uh, the network and neighbor commands, which is where we're going to go with this. So we're going to use uh, the neighbor command here and the network over on the remote end. So we're type in neighbor. This is going to be a unicast adjacency. So we're going to type in neighbor command is going to be, did I show IP interface brief? Yeah, 10.126, yeah, so 10.1.126.21. And then we have a couple of options here. We can tell what the interface we want it to go out of, which is going to be gig 1 slash 0, because you need to point it out where it's going to go. And now, if we were dealing with a uh, later versions of code, say like uh, 15.4, there's a feature called EIGRP over the top. And that feature allows you to bridge EIGRP over your private WAN, over BGP and all that stuff. Well, I'll briefly touch on that, how that works. But that's just the general idea of how it actually gets implemented. So we're going to go to router 21 and do the exact same thing. So, oh, I don't know why it does that. 21. We're going to go to global config. Router EI... Router... EIGRP1 and uh, address family IPv4 uh, A1 and we type in neighbor is going to be 10.1.126.16 and yes I did notice the oh we had to specify the uh, gig 1 slash 0 for the outgoing connection and then we're going to go to router 22 and do the exact same thing now if you notice what I'm doing here, I'm doing I'm setting up neighbor relation, neighbor adjacencies, but I'm setting them up just to router 16. Normally, if you're going to use the net network statement, you're going to be comparing on everybody here. So we're going to type in router eigrp uh, one, and type in address family ipv4 uh, a one, and type in neighbor is going to be 10.1.120. What help if I just put that space in there, huh? Um, whoop, um, whoop, control E. Uh, 126.16 uh, gig 1 slash 0. So now if we go to router 16 and we come down here we do a show EIGRP address family IPv4 uh, neighbors. We don't have anything. Well, why could that? What could that be? So let's do a show IP EIGRP neighbors. Not there either. What's What's the deal? So why aren't we receiving anything? So let's do a debug EIGRP address family IPv4 packet or uh, one let's see if we're receiving anything. And we're not getting anything.
Let's see what this gives us. I'm not seeing anything coming across. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'll just use the network statement here, and then I have a... Um, over on this side, I have the point-to-point -point setups here. I'll use the point-to-point -point setups here on the those connections, so that's what we'll do there. Oh. So I'm going to go type in uh, you all. We're just going to go back to global config router eigrp1 and type in address family ipv 4 a one and type in network is going to be 10.120 uh, 10.1.126.0.0.0.255. Now why do I have to type in the 255? Well, with eigrp you technically don't because uh, by default auto summarization is turned off in uh, in 15.x, so you don't actually have to do that. I do it for just because of the fact that it's a force of habit. So I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to do a. I'm going to advertise my loop back in here. So I'm going to type in uh, network 10.100.0.0.0.0.0.255.255, and hit enter. And then I'm going to go to 21. Do the same thing. I'm going to type in. Uh, control a no neighbor and type in network 10.1.126.0.0 or dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five and do the same thing I'm gonna do with the network is gonna be ten dot one hundred dot zero dot zero and hit enter. So Let's see why this is not coming up. Show EIGRP, uh, I, I just family IPv4 neighbors. Nothing. What's going on here? And we'll take a look at all these commands, all these show outputs as we go through, but I want to get the, the at least the. Um, the initial setup going here, so I can I can ping so ping 10.1.126.21 or no I can ping All right, I have no problem pinging. Why can't I form debug eigrp Address family IPv4 and I ping 224.000010. Well, I got a response. Let's do repeat 10. I want to get at least a few responses. I can, I, I can talk to 20, um, 21. So I get a response from myself and 21, but I don't get a response from 22. So is 22 down? This is a good way to test if, you, if the protocol is even working. So I want to see... Let's go to 20, 16. Why does it do that? I think I'm going to get a new mouse eventually. Let's do a show run pipe section EIGRP. And let me do this. Uh, we'll do this. We'll grab and type in no, and we'll pull that neighbor statement out of there. See if it has anything to do with it. Oh, ironically, there it goes. Hmm. That was messing us up, huh? All right, so let's go to 21. 21 forms a neighbor relationship. Okay, let's go to 22 then, and type in control a no neighbor, and we'll type in uh, network is going to be 10.1.126.0.0.0.255, and then we'll also type in network 10.100.0.0.255. Uh,
and drum and do that. So that's going to advertise our loop accent as well. And then we're going to go to 16, and we're going to okay. So we're getting routes in. So that's a great sign. So now we're going to do a you all, so we can shut that off. So yeah, that neighbor statement was messing us up. I didn't realize. I didn't know that to be honest with you. Um, but that makes sense. So we're going to do a show eigrp address family ipv4. And we have a bunch of options. So we're going to work our way right down. And we're typing accounting. And so basically what this means right here is we have, this is our, our virtual router one, which this is going to be basically our virtual instance. And then we have accounting for AS, autonomous system one ID, and this is our router ID. This is dynamically learned. And then we have our states are, we have uh, prefix count is four. Um, I don't think we can. That I think that means total prefixes. Until right now, we only have um, we have an adjacency, which means that we're paired with 21 and 22, pending, and then down. And then um, the way that this actually works, we go back to our thing here and we look at show IP accounting. Come down here a little bit. Um, the way this actually works, and I would recommend you understanding what this says. Um, the prefix count, number of distinct prefixes that are present in the autonomous system. Okay, so I wasn't sure what that meant, but now I do. And so even though it says three, but the prefix count you're being, uh, these are the prefixes learned. So, so the prefix count is going to be the number of distinct prefixes that are present in the auto in this autonomous system. The state, whether it's uh, adjacency, pending. So pending means that there could be something wrong. So like, let's say the you have a metric that is wrong. So what I could do, and this is a great place if you're running name mode, to go in there and take a look and say, okay, do I have an issue with any of my neighbors? So knowing this command, I, that's why I'm showing you this command because it's really very useful. And then we'll have the state, we'll have the uh, address and sources can be the address, so this is what this guy's going to be. And then we have the, uh, the interface that was learned on and the prefix count, the number of prefixes that are advertised by this neighbor. So in this case, uh, 10002 is advertising two prefixes to us. So if we go back to our configuration, right now each router is advertising one route. So if we were to advertise another route in, you would see another route pop in from here. So that's the general idea for that. So the other one here we're going to take a look at here is whack this guy out and we're going to go see uh, events. Right now we have quite a few events. Now this is going to be a very good tool for you to take a look at and say, okay, what's, what's going on here? What do we have going on? And we can see the metric set. And then all the availability is going on here. So this poison squashed. Um, this is a very good tool to see what's been installed, what's been going on. And I, I believe it'll go back as far as there's buffer space to go back in. So the idea is, the way to look at the, this is, is to receive update met succeed, or metric and successor metric. And then we're going to see that the destination origin was uh, connected. And then... Uh, connection route t uh, routing table change this interface and interface delayed net address on that guy so there's a lot of good in good a lot of good resources in here to take a look at and then we have interfaces obviously we've seen this before and what the interfaces are so this is be where if you wanted to see you know how many peers we have if there's a lot of uh, pay, anything pacing going on here, anything that's going on that we should be aware of, this is going to be almost as useful as neighbors. Neighbor command is if you have, if you're trying to get something to go through, but you're not sure what's going on. If there's a queue count, that's going to be a issue in anybody's network. Queue count means there's something waiting to be sent, but it can't be because of the fact that you haven't become fully adjacent. The one that I skipped over is going to be multicast. Uh, multicast and um, let's see here. We're not using multicast, so we don't have to worry about that one. Uh, multicast would be if you're using multicast routing, and we're not doing that. And then multicast routing in the effect of you got PIM going with the IGRP and you want to trace that that stuff. So we're going to take a look at uh, perf stats. See if there's anything, and we're going to hit enter. Performance statistics is what this basically is, and you can see number of time rib called for processing prefixes is two. Total time taken uh, by the rib, and I'm not, I think this is in picoseconds because we're dealing with named mode. 
uh, total time taken for processing prefixes, and then uh, the other uh, performance statistics. And uh, the PDM name is uh, what does that stand for again? I, I wrote that down. Um, forget what that stands for at the top of my head. But basically, the idea is protocol datagram something. Hold on, I'll look it up. Okay, what PDM stands for is dealing with different protocol suites. So each of them has its own PDM, and the PDM is a protocol dependent module. PDM defines a type and format for the destination data. In EIGRP, each header's family is, is, is implemented as a PDM. So that's where that comes into play. So you have a PDM is going to be, PDM name is the IPv4 EIGRP autonomous system inf instance that it's running. So if we had IPv6 running, then that would be a second PDM for that instance. And um, so there's that one. And then we're going to take a look at uh, timers. Obviously, it's going to be pretty straightforward with how that one works. So the way that the timers are going to work, we have the default timers are going to be um, the hello process and the expiration process. So in most cases, you're going to be doing the five-second hello and a 15-second uh, dead timer, so or the hold timer. So stuck and active means that you sent out a query and you haven't received a query response back in. So it's stuck in the active state. When a route is, if we were to do a show, or do I think we could do topology at this point. Yeah, it's actually topology. If you see passive here, that's a good sign. That means that they're, the routing table and the IGRP have uh, synced the routing tables, the topology table, the neighbor table. Everything is good to go. And what happens at that point is the routes are then installed in the routing table, and then the routing environment is stable. If it goes active, it sends out. It's actively looking for its dest how to get to its destination, and you actually you send out what they call as a uh, query, and the, the route goes active. So this P would turn into an A. What end, would end up happening there is if the query goes out, and the query timer by default is three minutes. If you don't receive a reply in, from all the way down to the edge of your network and back, so far out as your query domain goes, and you bring that back in. If you go all the way to the end of your query domain, which could be 20 routers away, for all you know, and if it comes all the way back in, and if it takes more than three minutes for your queries to go all the way out and your replies to come all the way back, if it takes longer than three minutes, it can become stuck and active, and that's where that SIA timer comes into play. So that's the that's the general idea for that. Now, if you were to modify this underneath the um, underneath the global process, you could type in EIGRP hello interval. A whole time. I think you, you can also do that underneath the interface uh, level. I think and go from there, and uh, go from there. But um, that's the idea behind that one. So, and then we had the last one here. Is it the last one? Traffic. Traffic is going to be specific to what's going on. This is good to see what's being sent, what's being received. Do you have acknowledgments set? Uh, acknowledges, acknowledgments sent. Do you have a uh, SIA queries uh, replies? Uh, stuff like that going on. So hello is being sent and received. This is pretty uh, typical of what you should see. Um, updates received and sent, all that good stuff. So, uh, and then right now the it says right here the PD and process ID number is 209. So if you were to do a show proc CPU and hit enter, and then go down to process now process ID 209, and the hello process is 241. So if you're going down to 209. 209. So 209 is right here. This is the PDM, the EGRP IPv4. That's that process. And if you go down to 241, you would see the EGRP IPv4 hello. So you can see exactly how much of each process is taking. Now, is this uh, beneficial for the lab? Maybe not, but it's going to be good for you to understand how that would actually come into play. Now, the thing with this being is, and I'll get into, um, I'll talk more about the initialization here in just a second. Understanding how this actually breaks down and being able to read these is going to be pretty, um, it's going to be good for real world environments. So, in the real, in the lab environment, probably not, or inside the CCA lab, probably not going to be worth two beans to you. But when you get outside of the lab and you're in the real world and you're trying to troubleshoot something and, you know, uh, you're in a real world environment and something's not quite right, this is going to give you a good place to start and say, okay, could it be if hellos are too fast? So if you were to come here and do look at traffic, 
you could zone in on the process ID, you should do a show proc, and go from there, and then, I don't think you could do a show proc, um, history, you can do the sorted, which is going to show you the highest percentage, but, um, this one here, at least it'll tell you at this point, okay, well, 241 is going to be our EIGRP IPv4 hello. It's pretty low on the, on the totem pole, but it's got one of the things. So if you were to type in sorted, oh, that's what I wanted to type in. You're going to see that the, uh, it's pretty high up there. We have 241 is there, two, uh, 209 is down the way a little bit, I bet. Or maybe not. But we have the hello processes taking, um, like a quarter of a percent every five seconds. So realistically speaking, there's not a whole lot going on. Just the hellos going back and forth. So that's pretty much all there is to that. Just knowing how to find this stuff and how to re understand what's going on. You know, so if you get a, uh, a high utilization for something and you're not sure what the problem is, start digging into the protocols. That's going to tell you what's going on. And in my opinion, that's what really makes you an expert. Just because you know how to turn a feature on or off, that, that's great. I mean, anybody can kind of Google this stuff and figure it out. But understanding how to correlate between one and the other and knowing how to you know, say, okay, well, I think this might be the problem and knowing how to find where it's at, that's what I think really makes you good at what you do. Makes us good at what we do, I should say. So don't be afraid to uh, flex your muscle and say, okay, I'm going to figure this out. So... Um, the other one, we're, we've taken a look at named mode. Now, we've also taken a look at multi-AF mode at the same time. So if we were to go to config t, config t, type in uh, router eigrp1, and type in address family, we're going to have both v4 and v6 available. That's what they mean by multi-address family mode. So you can run both ipv4 and ipv6 at the same time. However, with eigrp, if you run both at the same time, they are different processes. They can... Um, I don't think I can use uh, autonomous system uh, one here. Yeah, see, uh, okay, Unicast AS one must configure IPv6 Unicast command first. Oh, uh, IPv6 Unicast routing. And then we'll go back to router eigrp1, and then address family ipv6a1. All right, so it's going to allow us to run on the same autonomous system number, which is fine. But if you were to come down here, remember with eigrp, you have two different protocol-dependent modules, meaning that there are going to be two separate instances underneath the process. So when you're dealing with this, um, you'll come down here and you'll do a show show EIGRP traffic and now you're gonna have this is for IPv4 and we'll do IPv6 and we'll see okay the, there is no process we haven't turned anything on the reason why that is we're not actually peering with anybody yet but if this was you'd see the hello process here and the PDM process would be in a different value I'll come back to this later when we do um, IPv6 let me make a note of that to come back to it we have that, and then we're going to jump over to, um, that's multi-AF mode. And then Split Horizon is going to be pretty straightforward as well if you've dealt with, um, uh, what is that thing called? Uh, oh yeah, Frame Relay. Um, or any type of um, MBMA type of connect connectivity. The way you would do that um, in name mode is you would go to Global Config, Router, uh, EIGRP1, and you type in Address Family IPv4A1, and you type in uh, topology, uh, no, AF interface is going to be gig 1 slash 0. And then under here, we have split horizon. By default, it is turned on. So if you wanted to turn it off, you'd have to do no split horizon. Now, if we do, now how do I know it's turned on by default? Well, let's take a look at this. So let's type in do show run, show run all section EIGRP. This is going to give us all the output. Now, I recommend, recommend you t turn this on for the reasons of the following. Well, because of the fact that something's going on, you might need to know about it. So, right here it says IP Split Horizon EIGRP underneath the global process. So, um, this is what's going on, and this is 
Um, this is actually happening underneath the um, AF interface. This is an AF interface configuration right here. So it's telling you the hello interval for the IGRP is 1 and 5. The bandwidth percent is 1 and 50. Um, it's EIGRP as uh, it, this whole horizon is on, is what this is telling you. So the idea behind this is if you had this stuff, uh, if you turned it off, it would flip it over to no IP split horizon. So to turn that off, type in no IP split, hori or IP split horizon, or no, no split horizon, and hit enter. Now if we do the show run all again, you're going to have the neighbor bounce, and then you're going to have underneath the... Uh, where is it? No split horizon right there. So it's not going to change under here. It's going to change under where you made the configuration change, and I'm underneath the AF interface gig zero, or one size zero. It makes the change right under here. So that's where that comes into play. So there's that, and then next top next top processing is done at also at the interface level. So we're going to do a this guy, next top self, by default it is turned on. Where is it? It just it was just there. Next top process, next top self. What this is going to do by default, and we'll go to here and we'll type in um, sort of the very top here. Uh, let's see here. This guy, next top processing. Next, top processing, next, there we go. By default, th what this does is to advertise, um, to advertise routes with the local outbound interface address as the next top, use the next top self. What this means is when our, if you were in a uh, hub and spoke environment and 22 sent uh, 16 an update, 16 would update 21 with that update, but it would look like it came from 16's address, not 22's address. So what you could do uh, realistically is you could turn next top self off and it would not uh, switch out R16 or R22's address with 16's address. So when 21 would receive that address in or the update in, it would see it's coming from router 22. That's what next top self does. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, we've seen multicast versus unicast updates. It's just a neighbor command, and I don't know why it wasn't working. That was just that. Uh, kind of bothered me, but I, I'm not sure what the deal with that one is. Main mode, multi-AF mode, split horizon, and then next stop processing. Uh, very easy to do. I go from there. So uh, We're going to look at authentication in the next video because it's uh, you know getting everything authenticated. Then we'll start looking at some of the other options and features. Um, actually, what I'll do in the next video is we'll do, we've done name mode and we went through a bunch of configuration options with that. Next video, we'll take a look at doing name mode and classic mode and then getting everything operational. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.